I hate repair requests. I mean, I hate them so much. <laughs> I'm actually dedicating this whole video to minimizing those repair requests. I'm completely redoing the whole way that I think about my listing presentation and how I negotiate because these repair requests are getting out of control. So the purpose of this video is to help sellers prepare their house and to counter an offer properly so that they minimize those repair requests and also to prepare the buyer too. Like these buyers, they may not have the proper representation and they may not have those agents to, we'll just say, present a repair request that's reasonable. I have redone the whole way I do my business from these last two weeks of pain <laughs> in that I am approaching my listing presentation and the way I respond to offers. I will share what I'm doing as one of the top selling agents in Orange County, California. I think you're going to get a lot of benefit out of this. And of course, if you do, I'd really appreciate if you can smash that like button and subscribe to my channel. Now, all property in California, and I'm sure a lot of states do the same thing, they sell the property in as-is condition. Now, if your state does not write that into the contract, I highly suggest that you write that into your offer, that the property is being sold as-is. Now, in California, that as-is clause is specific to the time of acceptance. That means when the buyer and the seller have a fully executed contract, the condition of the property is what the buyer is agreeing to. So you may ask, okay, well, if it's as is condition, then why are there repair requests? Now realize when that buyer is submitting an offer on a seller's property, they don't know all the things about the property, okay? They don't know if the roof's good. They don't know if the HVAC system's good. They don't know what other issues are gonna arise on the property. So they make their offer with with the condition of the property in mind. Every buyer has a right to do their investigations on the property, meaning they can bring in their home inspector, termite inspector, sewer line, roof, whatever, all the inspectors in a duration of time. So in California, it's hard coded at 17 days. So once you open escrow, the buyer has 17 days to do their investigations. I'm gonna tell you that I advise my sellers to bump that up to 10 days. If they need more time, we can always extend it, but there's no reason why we need 17 days to bring a home inspector in, okay? Now, once again, if there's further investigations that are needed, you can always negotiate that out farther if you're a buyer. But in my experience, we always get it done in 10 days. But what happens is let's say we have that buyer's investigation set at 10 days, they do all their inspections, and then the contingency is removed. And what'll happen is the buyer will on the 10th day, the due date, not two or three days before, they send massive repair request list. You see this? This is just one, okay? That goes on and on and on. We want all these things fixed, okay? And if you don't fix these things, we're not going to sign off on our contingency removal. So they hold the seller over the barrel saying, hey, fix this or we may not move forward. I hate that. I hate that. Now, if you're a buyer, you know, what do you do? You just got all these reports like, oh, what do I do with this? Is this even something I should be purchasing? And that's where that buyer's agent should really help guide you through the process. They're going to know what things in that report are big ticket items or things that you should negotiate. The repair request that I got here was a total joke. They're asking for stupid cosmetic things. In fact, things that didn't even show up on the home inspection. And in my opinion, that was bad guidance from the buyer's agent. Because if you produce something like this to the seller, they might get so emotional and say, forget it. I don't even want to deal with you. You got to realize, most sellers are beyond frustrated. They're tired. They've already opened up the house a hundred times. They've already negotiated on price a little bit. They're trying to move. And now you give them this repair request that may or may not be reasonable. Okay. And if you present an unreasonable request, you could get the seller so upset that they're not going to cooperate at all. Whereas if you were a buyer and presented a respectful repair request that made sense, more than likely the listing agent and the seller would say, okay, that seems fair. So don't get too aggressive aggressive if you're a buyer. I mean, be reasonable, okay? Be reasonable. You don't want to shoot yourself in the foot. So what are things that are reasonable? If there's any active leaks, in my opinion, that needs to be addressed. If there are electrical issues that are dangerous or any type of code-related electrical issues should be repaired. If there are any mold or any living organisms on the property like beehives or rats or termites should be addressed. Having the garage door that automatically retracts if someone were to walk underneath it is an important repair. Having smoke detectors, CO detectors, any major code related issues on the property are things that I think a seller should address. Okay, this one totally annoys me. So if you're a buyer, you know, and you're buying a house from me, don't be offended. <laughs> 
But we do not make the request that the seller does all the paint touch-ups and removes the nail holes and spackles and textures. Like, first of all, they're trying to just get out of the house. And second of all, it would be a tremendous amount of liability for a seller to agree to that because, you know, let's say they do all the touch-ups and they're moving boxes. There happens to be a scuff mark. They might have missed it. Then you can go take them to small claims court and sue them for a new paint job if they agree to something like that. And realize this is a repair request. This is not a upgrade request. <laughs> so keep that in mind if you're a buyer. In my opinion, any handyman type of, you know, fixes that are minor in scope should not be included in the repair request. Like the garden gate latch isn't perfect or the weather stripping on a garage is slightly frazzled. Anything that is minimal in scope that doesn't impact the value of the house, in my opinion, should just not even be put on there. You are buying the house as is. In my opinion, things that should not be addressed is when things are working well like an oven or an HVAC system or a dishwasher, and the inspector comes out and they write down, oh, the water heater is working perfectly, but they advise the buyer to set some money aside to replace it in the future. Okay, now just so you guys know, I've had water heaters last 25 plus years, but now a buyer will be like, whoa, I need a new water heater, I need a new air conditioning system, I need a new furnace, and now I need a new roof, and all this is gonna cost, you know, $200,000, and so I'm gonna go launch a request to the seller, okay? That's unrealistic. So in my opinion, if things are working properly, okay, meaning that the oven's working, the water heater is working properly, the HVAC system is spitting out the right temperature, we don't ask for replacement and we don't ask the seller to give credits to replace it in the near future. You are buying this property as is. I have completed a video on a home inspection checklist that goes through, it's kind of boring, I'm not gonna lie, but it's very beneficial. If you're a seller, I highly recommend that you watch that. And if you're a buyer, I highly recommend you watch that video as well so you know what to look for. I also created a home inspection checklist, which I will link down below. I think you will get some benefit out of that. Now, the problem that I have with these repair requests is sometimes the buyer just feels like, oh, this is another round of negotiations and I'm going to grind the seller. And I just can't tell you how important it is that you tread lightly if you really want the property. Because if you anger that seller by asking for unrealistic and unreasonable requests, they might not ever want to do business. Like, I cannot tell you how emotional a transaction can be over these repair requests. Be mindful, be thoughtful, be realistic. Now, there are a few things that you can do if you're a home buyer as far as addressing the home repairs that you find on your home inspection. You can ask the seller to reduce their price to cover the repairs. You can ask for a credit or you can ask them to fix the repairs themselves. Or you can do a hybrid model. Maybe you reduce the price or maybe you offer some cash to repair some items, but you want some repairs to be done before close of escrow. Now realize that seller can always say no. So this is another round of negotiations and hopefully you're working with an agent that can guide you wisely on how to navigate through the repair request. The number one biggest risk as a seller and a buyer with agreeing to these repair requests is that the buyer is not gonna be satisfied with the quality of the repair the seller makes. Now you have to understand the seller's perspective. They're like, okay, I gotta fix these little handyman items or you know, I'm gonna hire Joe the plumber to come out and just have him fix it. Well, you know, these buyers are thinking they're going to get a brand new property. So when they go through that final walkthrough and inspect the repairs, they may not be satisfied, hold up escrow, and it could be a whole thing. Had this happened before, it was a nightmare, and I knew the seller I was dealing with, they're not gonna do the highest quality whatever, because it's no longer their house. So as a buyer, I'm always gonna recommend that if you want repairs, I would make a credit request and do it the way you wanna do it. Hire your own vendors to do it. If you are a seller, I'm also gonna make the same recommendation. Now, a lot of these sellers are like, no way, I'm not putting money in it. I can fix some of these things. Now, you just heard the reason why I do not like sellers making those repairs because more than likely, they're not gonna do it to the quality that the buyer is expecting and it can be a major ordeal. So we're gonna avoid that. If you're watching my channel and if you ever hire me for any of the listings, you're gonna see me be really hard on that because we want to avoid this type of poo-poo. It, it's aggravating and it doesn't serve anybody involved. Now, the other major issue that I have with these repair requests 
is that we're waiting way into the process before we're even negotiating these repairs, which the repairs, usually the negotiation can last two or three days. So now we're already farther down the process. And let's say it's a 30-day escrow. We finally get agreement on what we're repairing. And then the seller has to go find another property or they have to get moving and they got to transfer their kids' schools and, and it's a mess. And now you're asking them to do all of these repairs that they may not have the time to do and the vendors that can do them might be completely booked up. So you're putting undue pressure on the seller. And let me tell you, <laughs> uh, they don't really appreciate it. And sometimes they say, fooey, I'm not going to do it anyway. And you can either decide to buy my property or not. Because remember, this repair request is not tied to the purchase agreement, okay? It's a separate agreement. In California, we have escrows. The escrow company does not get a copy of the repair request, nor does your title company, nor does your lawyer, nor does your mortgage company, okay? No one gets a copy of that repair request other than the seller and the buyer and the realtor involved. So what am I doing different to avoid these repair requests for the sellers that I represent? I started doing this a few months ago, and that is I am ordering a home inspection for my sellers, I comp it because I think it's that important because it really does minimize all the pain and energy that it goes into these repair requests. And if there are any major things that are wrong with the property, I want to know about it. My seller wants to know about it and it will give us the time to make those repairs, okay? But the most important thing is when that buyer goes and presents an offer to the seller, we're going to say, hey, we like your offer, but we are going to counter you with our home inspection report along with other reports like the termite report. We're going to also send over all of our seller disclosures up front during the offer process, right? And we're going to say, we want you to make an offer based on the condition of the property that we are disclosing to you. So the buyer is going to come back and they're going to say, oh, we understand. We see your reports. So we're in agreement. And this is the price we are going to to provide for you on your property. So when that repair request or when that buyer's investigation is due, we are expecting no repair requests unless they wanna hire their own home inspector and that home inspector comes up with some significant readings. But more than likely, I hire the best inspectors, at least I think so, and we're not gonna negotiate very much on that repair request. So that is the benefit. And if that buyer does come up and say, we want these repair requests and they were on the home inspection that we provided them, we're going to say a hard no, I'm sorry, but we already disclosed that to you. And you made that offer with the condition of the property in mind. You guys see how that works? I love that. It's so much easier. It gives the seller time to make some repairs if necessary. And it also gives the reassurance for the buyer when they make the offer that they know a lot of information up front before even making that offer. So I'm really trying to revolutionize the way that we're selling real estate here in the United States of America. In my opinion, every buyer should have a better understanding of the condition of the property when they're actually purchasing the property. And one of the ways they do that is by being provided a home inspection. I always advise that the buyer hire their own home inspector just for their own due diligence. But I really like to minimize this repair request because it can cause, we'll just say, some really bad conflicts for the buyer and the seller. It can create undue emotions that inspire bad behavior. <laughs> and bad blood and we want to avoid that as much as possible. Now, one more helpful little tip for watching till the end of the video, and that is the home inspection company that I use actually does the entire inspection, but at the bottom of their entire inspection, they go through all the repairs and give an estimated cost of repairs. And that's really important when you're negotiating with the buyer, because in my experience, most buyers overestimate the cost of repairs. So if you are a buyer, or even if you're a seller and you're looking for a home inspector, ask them if they will actually give an estimated cost for those repairs. So if you are a home seller and you don't wanna make those repairs, at least you have an estimated cost and you can even credit the buyer if they do in fact request it. My name is Audra Lambert and I'm one of the top selling agents here in Orange County, California. If you got any benefit out of this video, please smash the like button and subscribe to my channel. I would greatly appreciate it. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.